Well, the f Andy, I've literally, in nine months of not making a YouTube video, have you forgotten how to f talk? Yep, we're back. And in this episode, I consider giving myself a vasectomy. The Zhuk takes another step backwards. And... <laughs> communication in the yard breaks down further. But first, a little update. It's fair to say that the last couple of years have been pretty hard on everyone. And because I'm stupid, I've taken on more than most. It's been an incredibly tough winter for everyone. And it's now getting on for a year since I've been able to show you anything substantive about the Zhuk or any of my other cars. So I think at very least, I owe you, our a thousand strong-ish subscribers, a bit of a catch-up video to show you what's been going on for all that time. Pour yourself a little drink, sit back, and let's catch up on the last 12 months of happenings. I can't say it will be a wild ride, but it will be a rusty one with little splashes of welding. <laughs> right. Dear YouTube, it's been nine months since my last video-based confession, and I have a great many reasons why I've not uploaded anything in this time. Some of those are actually quite good reasons. Uh, the most important of those being that I'm going to be a father for the first time. And if I wanted to keep uh, recording videos for this channel, there was a fair amount of stuff in my life that I had to sort out first uh, to generate the required <laughs> WAF. WAF is wife acceptance factor. So, <laughs> I had to do a load of home DIY projects finish writing up my PhD and a bunch of other stuff before April. So all of this stuff has had to be done so that that, that child has a non-disastrous place for it to live. And by getting all of that stuff done, I the time required to get down the yard and do some work again, right? So this video is a catch-up video of everything that I've been working on. The continuity is all over the place because it was filmed over the last year, pretty much. Once we've got this video out of the way, the plan will be to do more regular video updates again. Yes, the Zhuk is still a disaster area, and yes, it still needs to get done. Let's get cracking. One of the things I've missed the most about going down the yard is the random assortment of vehicles which come and go on a regular basis. First job of the day was to reposition the Zhuk and the trusty XUD had no problem starting. I'm not gonna give you a big lecture about subscribing but it'd be really nice to hit a thousand and even if you don't subscribe, can you just hit that like button? It will help the channel get back on track. Progress on this has stalled, and here's why. The back door doesn't sit straight. This is a pattern panel, and you can actually stretch it and make it pivot as you, uh, if you leave a, if you put a bar in here. The back panel is about five mil higher than the old one, but that seems impossible because the actual ladder chassis hasn't moved, and this bolts straight onto it. But for whatever the reason, this is a bit higher than it should be. This is a massive bit higher. Then you can also see that it gets closer and closer and closer to the edge. And gets further and further and further away this side. It's gonna be something like modifying the hinges. There's very little point in me drilling holes in for the catches and things to go here when it's not in the right place. You can't, I can't do the new floor until this door sorted because the rain is pouring in. I can't sort this door or this door 
because the roof has got so many holes in it along this top lip here that uh, there's no metal to hang the new door from and even if I could hang the new door from this it still wouldn't fit because this door's too high so all of this needs to get sorted before I can do the floor the main issue is the fact that when it rains the you know it's basically pouring in here I'm gonna have a go at plug welding these holes not the update I wanted to give but given that we've been in a national lockdown and this is a 50 mile round trip from where I live. It, it's, it's, it's what it is. And despite a rapidly rusting roof edge, at the start of last summer, I cracked on with the roof welding. As you can imagine, teaching yourself to weld on the world's thinnest, rustiest roof skin is probably not a good idea. But I don't think I did too badly. What are we looking at? Nah. I'll go down there. And then one more up there. And then that's at least like the back part done. Oh, spilled my coffee. Never let it be said I don't give you abstract camera angles. Then it was a case of making good the other side. Hello my friends. In terms of the mess that I've been making today, just a reminder, this is what we're dealing with. What I have been doing is snotting up some of the holes. I'm just going to do the last one here and then I'm going to throw some primer on this for now. I have to come back with some more welding wire to do the other holes because it's quite a mess still. And here we are once again. This nightmare that is consuming my spare time. The worst juke in the UK. rib here. It's probably worth saying that the rust still didn't seem all that bad on the other three quarters of the roof. So the next day at the yard I continued. But on further investigation, it turned out that the rust on the back of the Zhuk was replicated all the way around the entire van, which gave me somewhat of a dilemma. Continue to plug the remaining 47 holes from all the hoses and ladders on the roof, knowing that the sides were knackered, or did I go back to the drawing board? It was time for a fun drink and to do something else on the van before I lost the will to live totally. Had I been wasting my time? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm almost made up about this not fitting at all. I found the triangle bits. So I can actually bolt in my windscreen or at least tighten the threaded bar that in a normal car would be the A-pillar. But on a Zhuk, there is no A-pillar. And that means that it's probably quite dangerous. You see, on a normal car, 
you have a metal A pillar. But on the Juke, you get a bit of threaded bar, about a third of the size of that. And until I found these, I wasn't able to tighten my threaded bar, to tighten in the windscreen, to make the rubbers sit correctly. So even though it's pouring with rain, I'm a happy chappy. Can't believe I found them. At least the headroom's still good. What the ah! f am I doing? Ratchet it down through, I guess. That's just a metaphor for this project, isn't it? Yes, this was as tedious as it looked, and as cold and as damp as it looked. It looks like, since tightening it, I'm getting water inside now. Look! Look at that. Oh my god! <laughs> This is a pain in the arse, I'm never doing this again. Oh, there she goes! <laughs> Careful, Andy. Don't get too distracted by that tractor in the workshop. Oh, too late. You've pulled the threaded bar through the roof plate. So the bonnet wasn't fitting at all. So you have enlarged the slot rather brutally with a Dremel by half a centimetre. It was that or bend the hinges. So I'm going to paint, tidy these up with a linishing brush and then put some paint on them and get the bonnet back on. I've got to take in this corner a bit, but it's pretty even here. And it's pretty even here as well, so I'm quite happy with that and that shows this is in the right place. It's just more worryingly is it's even here, gets to here and then it's had replacement wings at some point. The bonnet goes in away from the front panel and this goes out. Which is Annoying. And at least it's symmetrical, so you get the same thing here, it's close, it gets to about here and then goes away. But you know, I guess it's a juke, so it's acceptable, but I'm going to put a temporary rubber seal in of some description to try and keep the water from running down in here now as well. Next job was to tackle that bent back door. There's movement on the hinges in here but only kind of left, right, backwards and forwards, no height adjustment, and there's the same here on this door. So nothing that is gonna help kind of align this in a way that's useful. So the first job was to widen all of the hinge bolts. As you can see, I've re-welded the hinges. A slight defect there, but I can feel that. And this is about a centimeter shorter than it was. Drilling the hinge, and the boot panel itself and that shortening we now have a bit more alignment at least it's on and it shuts right you lot i'm going to do some more work on the roof of this but i think it's tempting fate that there's one of these disco twos parked up here do you remember when i said that this roof would make a nice addition to that well it's funny isn't it because that roof is so rotten maybe a mod like this is the right thing to start thinking about I don't know. Now, most of what's been going on behind the scenes has been the sort of preparations to uh, repair the roof on the van. And that's not going to be an insignificant un undertaking because, well, you'll see from this video, it's involved getting a, another roof and panels from Poland during a global pandemic. And in what can only be described as bloody typical fashion, as my roof was about to arrive, the yard was the busiest I'd ever seen it. But at least there were plenty of people around to help carry the roof. 
Hello, mate. This is for you. Beers and things. How much time? Uh, how much time? Jesus. Okay, 10. Max, that's fine. They will go in two minutes. Not what are you doing, Brett? <laughs> Really? <laughs> Good timing, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You... Can you swing that round in now? He's going to give it a go. He's just going to say. <laughs> I don't blame him. It is. Charlie's been scared into submission. Yeah, straight back is good. Maybe he's reliable. Yep. Super. I think it's fair to say that trying to move a Zhuk roof on your own is quite an undertaking. It's a little bit bigger and floppier than you might expect. But with the help of chaps much taller than me, we got it moved. Thanks, Sally. As the driver set off for a south coast port, the next stop for the roof was my okay. container. I'm still recording. <sighs> okay. Um, as usual, I don't really know what I've got myself in for. Bigger and heavier than expected. Time to get it unwrapped. To be honest, I'm a bit out of my depth. Oh look, a Zhuk A pillar. And here we have the mystery parcel safely loaded. What do you reckon? It's gonna be fun. thinking is this is quite a strong piece of angle that runs all the way through it and rather than hack this away and unpick all of these spot welds it's actually just be easier if I chopped off that roof kept the frame that was already in there made it good and then get I don't know some box section and basically make up an extension in between the frame in that roof and this roof so literally just from there to there and then that leaves you with the problem of what do you do with the windows so what we've got is I've cut the side panel from two Zhuks and had that sent from Poland thank you to Freight Express and Mirac what I've actually had cut is this piece two of these and the idea is that the new roof will be up here and this piece is one there. I have no idea what I'm going to do for the back, but I do know what I'm going to do on the front. In essence, we're going to make a bulkhead here, and then we'll come down here. This will stay the original height, we won't use that, but I'll fit an oval window here. 
in an oval window here and it'll look like a cargo zook. Now, before you say that I'm not keeping this standard, my plan is to make this look completely factory. If you saw what a high roof shook actually looks like, they don't look great. They look like they were made with a hammer. My plan is to make the roof a little bit higher because I don't have ladders, I don't have hoses, I don't have all the fire brigade stuff. That means uh, I can stand up inside. Then we just have the problem of what to do with this. Yeah. Help. And that was the flanges on the top and the bottom of my two new upper side panels folded. Next up, to get them sent away and shop blasted. Crawling mat. Oh, so comfortable. Don't say anything. Now you could say, fabricating a sidestep for the Zhuk is kind of not the biggest issue that I should be addressing. And you'd be right. Mm. But let's be honest, so much of this Zhuk is terrible. You can't blame me for doing something fun once in a while. Well, that side's not too bad. That side's a bit of a mess, because I got the spot in wrong. It ain't going anywhere. Okay, first of all, it's freezing here. Second of all, so now I'm making these gussets. Uh, I've done that side, now I need to do this side. Then we will have a set. And nothing to stand on. I also found out quite a lot of jukes don't have this step. So maybe this means there's one thing about this which isn't totally poverty spec. I'm bloody minded, I could have just put a cutting disc on it, but I want to try my new tool out. And it's pretty awesome, given that that's the size of the battery. There we go. It's a little bit unconventional, but it's a step in the right direction. <laughs> Several bad puns later. The powder coating was completed. Yes, collecting shiny powder coated things never grows old, and my shop blasted roof sides looks pretty good too. Several days later. I've learned that the stuff I paint with this, Zinc 182, which is pretty much the best rust protection you can get for bare metal, does not rust. Whereas pretty much everything for a Zhuk in terms of pattern panels does very quickly. I'm gonna throw a coat on just to protect it. In other news, what do you reckon to that? A couple of pits in my welding have kind of shown through, but in the grand scheme of things, pretty chuffed with that. Probably the shiniest part of the entire Zhuk. That gives you an idea of how quickly Zhuk panels actually rust. 
three months ago this was new it doesn't look too bad on this side this has just been it's been sat in the jug but it's not been actually wet but and look this this is where a cutting disc was lying so just by this bit of the panel being protected from oxygen you can see that it's absolutely perfect so now these panels have been shot blasted I really want them to stay that way because the absolute worst case scenario for me will be raising the roof, it looking like it's factory, and then it immediately rusting. Because <laughs> that's what screwed me with the existing roof anyway. This one is actually a pattern panel, and this one was cut off the other side of a juke. Because obviously we've got a crew door on one side, so if we'd had both sides, one side would have been shorter. Right, let's get some paint on this one as well. Now, gain paint on myself. Oh. Another part of the project which had stalled somewhat was me having somewhere to sit and drive the thing. This was because the original driver's seat base had rotten too badly to bolt the new truck seats to it. So the first job was to clean one of the new seat bases I'd had sent from Poland up and see what it was like with one of the truck seats sat on top of it. Are going to work. Tell me what I wanted to know. And it's going to have to be that height, or lower, or that's got to go. I mean, the seat isn't actually as tall as that, but if I want it to swivel, then that's going to be a thing. Good news is they're incredibly comfortable. As these don't fit, and as these don't fit, and as that doesn't fit, what we're going to do is we're going to make our own seat mount. That's the plan. Seat base, swivel, a plate made up on the floor to bolt to. That then bolts on about there. Seat then bolts onto that. And there's hopefully enough room all the way around it to swivel. So this is the nastiest metal from the original seat. The box was removed. I need to make this strong enough to bolt this to this because obviously you don't want it just to pull up the floor so and also repair the floor around the back so here we go again that's my drinking supply Right, I haven't been down the yard since August 2021 and things have definitely taken a slight turn for the worst as to be expected with the world's fastest rusting vehicle. The roof has continued to uh, rust even under the tarpaulin and the areas inside the juke that were damp in the process of drying out rusted much more than I could have expected. So I'm now playing catch up. You're not wrong there. All of the jobs that I hadn't got to almost a year ago were now coated in dust, rust, and bird poo. So we have a gusset repair to do before we do the floor this side. And we have to replace this floor here because I think this is a bit minging. 
at this is proof that we need to get a floor back in this shook quickly. This is mainly stuff that is just blown in from the missing floor in the yard. So this looks about 100 years old now. I think it's back to the drawing board with that as well. Okay, today we're gonna to move on with the floor. Probably a good time to say that this was originally one of the best parts of this shirk. As with all jobs on Juk, it's never as simple as you might think. Thought we were going to get the floor plug welded in today, so I'd cut the panel to be this shape. Now, if you get down to the step, you realise that it's too. Well, this is absolutely skanky. Oh, honestly, this fan just makes sense to use that instead. Anyway. And then we're gonna cut it. Yep. Me, <laughs> there's no strength to it at all. Just a reminder. Well, it does appear you can make a fire engine out of filler. And now, my good friends, we're gonna cut some more of the floor out, I think. Yes, we're still plugging away at the old rot box, and yes, it's still rusting in places that were fine last week. And I think now the time really is to get a bloody floor in this, get a seat in this, so I can stop the birds flying in and shitting all over my dashboard. If I don't get this thing as sealed from the elements as a juke can be, then the good work that we've done over the last five years is going to be undone completely. It's now or never. Just cut all of this out. And the more I grind down, the more pitted and nasty the metal that I find is. But you know, it's not the end of the world. You see, this is how hardcore I am. It's raining and we're still welding. What could go wrong? Apart from getting a bit ambitious, I think I'm just about lined up. As my GoPro's broken, I'm gonna have to do an update on the camera phone. Well, you did say what could go wrong, and as soon as you did, your GoPro broke. All your own fault, Andy. Just the plugs to grind down, and next time we'll be on to the gear stick section. Oh, come on, what? Onward and alongward. So there we go. Another day in the life of owning a Zhuk. You think you're going to do one thing and then you discover more rust. I mean, that really does summarise the last five years of my life. Yes, it is five years that I've owned this Zhuk. And yes, I definitely bought the worst one in existence. 
typically I went in to do the floor and ended up doing the step and God knows what else. But all in all, progress was made. I'll see you next time. And yes, that really was a bit of an all over the place episode. But we'll be back with a more normal service soon. Until next time, here are some random clips from the cutting room floor. You don't see Cavalier GSIs very often. And you definitely don't see two of them very often. In the next couple of episodes, we're going to try and do this. What could go wrong? Put a bit of grease to us is like soup to him. Mm. He's gonna be dead anyway. Take the shine, they can't take the glow. Tell these boys that it's mine. Plus, I'm sitting on the throne. Have a switch on your chick, that's on the show. Catch a trick, fry him up in that Crisco. Fuck the grid, I'm a to a flip phone. On the splits, every lick is a shit. Blow a kiss on the